Good evening and welcome to Lincoln View High School for tonight's sectional final matchup between the Coldwater Cavaliers and the Delphine Jefferson Wildcats. I'm Nate Garlock, excuse me, alongside Danny Holbrook. And Danny, tournament's underway. First chance for both of these teams to play for a championship. That's an extra level of excitement. Got a nice crowd here tonight, and we should have an excellent matchup between these two teams. Well, absolutely, Nate. And you look at both these squads, and defense is the name of the game. Coldwater only gives up 35 points a game, and Delvis Jefferson only gives up 29 a game. So typically, you like to see offensive explosions. This one's going to be one on the defensive end. Both these teams um, have sport, you know, their own superstar, Olivia Lindemann for Delphus Jefferson and Riley Riskmiller for the Coldwater Cavaliers. Should be an excellent battle between those two tonight. Delphus Jefferson coming off of a big victory Monday night against Lipsick. It was a makeup game, but needed to be played as it ended up deciding the NWC, and Jefferson came away with a big victory that night. Well, you're going to see the Jeff Cats really get out and run it. They got really good guard play. They like to get to the rim. You're talking about a team here, Nate, that shoots almost 50% from the floor, and when they get to the rim, they like that contact, and they shoot almost 70% from the foul line. So you can see right away where they get a lot of points from. First possession was opened up by the Wildcats. They came up short on a three-point try. As it'll be an interesting battle down low. Lauren French is going to have her hands full with Riss Miller as Coldwater will have a size advantage all night long, but they're going to open up with a deep shot. That one's no good. Offensive rebound comes down to the Cavaliers. Well, and that's the one thing that Delphus Jefferson's got to do. They've got to box out on the boards. You can't allow Coldwater second and third chance points, and right there you see Riss Miller, the athleticism of it. Riss Miller going to work. They missed the first one. Puts the put back up for the early 2-0 lead. We'll take a look at the starting lineups for both teams tonight. Starting first for the Delphi Jefferson Wildcats. They're going to start number five, Hannah Wiltsey. Number 10, Gwen Tiemann. Number 15, Olivia Lindemann. Number 30, Jessa Rostefer. And number 42, Lauren French. Cold, Coldwater Cavaliers starting five look like this. Number four, Jenna Lugers. Number 15, Kelsey Seifring. Number 22, Becca Wenning. Number 23, Claire Steinke. And number 30, Riley Rissmiller. And there you see Riley Rissmiller on both ends of the floor. Offensively, she gets down low in the post, and defensively, she's going to rebound that ball all night. I don't care who you are. When you're playing a 6'5 girl with the athleticism of, of Rissmiller, you're in trouble. Chris Miller going to work one more time, and she is showing why she controls it down low. Averages over 16 points a game, has the first four here tonight. And Lauren French, here's the thing. With post defense, it starts on the perimeter. The guards have got to really get after the ball handlers, and they've got to keep that ball from going down to the post. Liv Lindemann's first shot on its way, a deep three-pointer. And she is the game changer for this Wildcats, <laughs> if you saw why right there. Equalizer right there, Nate. She is really talented. 4-3 lead, Coldwater on top here with two minutes off the clock to open this going up. Coldwater works the ball around the perimeter. You got to think pretty much on every possession. They're at least going to try to see if they can't have a look on the inside. That's what they're looking for right now. Well, they're going to front her with another girl, so they're going to try to keep the ball out of her hands. And they've got to they've got to get out on the shooters just like that. Look, what you do as a, as a team is you put your best post player and your best shooter on the same side of the floor, so you have to go out. Jenna Lugers with a big three-point play, and it's going to be up to the other Cavaliers. As you saw, Jefferson quickly put two players on a wrist miller, so somebody's going to be free. They're going to knock down shots as Lugers did just there. Another three-pointer on its way, and that one's good as Jefferson answers. Hannah Wilty comes up with the big three-pointer. Well, they get after them the three ball, Nate. They're 34% from the three line, and they, they're not afraid to shoot them, and they've got guards. And if you come out and you come out slow on them, they'll go around you to get to the rim. That's why wrist miller is so important on the defensive end. And that three-point line could come into play. As you mentioned, Delphus Jefferson very prolific from behind the arc. Coldwater not, as they were second to last as a team in three-pointing in the MAC this year. Right there, that's what I'm talking about, is you got to beat Riss Miller down the floor, and that's exactly what Lindemann did. Lindemann not able to connect as she did get to the rim that time. Coldwater comes up with the rebound, so it'll be important, too, to watch to see if Jefferson can give themselves second and third opportunities as they know they're going to have a height disadvantage down there as Lindemann is so good at getting through defenses, weaving her way around to try to get to the rim. It's going to be up to her teammates to try to get those to put back. Luger not able to connect on that one. Rebound down to the Wildcats. Well, and there you're seeing how important Riss Miller is to that offense. If she's not touching the ball, you know, they're, they're relying on a lot of outside shooting. Wiltsy comes up short on her three-point try. Becca Wenning brings it up into the front court for the Cavaliers. 
Last couple possessions, Riss Miller hasn't been able to touch the basketball, but she gets it right there. Long on that shot, Lindemann chases it down, gonna go out of bounds, last touch by Lindemann. Well, the Jefferson coaching staff said the keys to this game is they want to control Riss Miller, which is easier said than done, obviously, but they want to have an up-tempo game, and they want to put defensive pressure on those guards. As I said, the best form of post defense is perimeter defense, and you've got to stop that ball from going into the post. So initial uh, signal from the officials was that that was going to stay with the Cavaliers, but the officials got together, changed the call. The basketball went to the Lady Cats. Be interesting to see if Lauren French can can make Riz Miller wall up on her and play a little defense on her. You get her in foul trouble. Pull up three for Lindemann, no good. Another one and done possession for the Lady Cats. A seven to six, cold runner on top. Riz Miller trying to get it down low. French does a nice job reaching around to poke that one away. Did you see how far she got down in the post? That's huge. She was in the paint. When she gets the ball down there at 6'5", and she's got the ability to shoot the ball from the left side, she's deadly. Great inbound play for the Cavaliers that time as Claire Steinke came free. She was able to get that one up for two. Well, look, the longer that uh, Coldwater stays in the lead and can hang around this game, they're the clear underdog in this game. But right now, they're playing like they're the favorites. French, she's going to go to work down low. Does a great job off of the slip pass. She gets that one up and in. You saw Riss Miller leave her in the paint. She went out to guard the ball, and they get the ball right inside to her. Kirsten Morris checked in for the Wildcats. As Lindemann now takes that one away, going to pull up from the free throw line. That one's going to be short. Fight for the loose ball is going to go end up in the hands of Lugers. I'd like to see Lindemann try to get another step and go to the basket, make that an easier shot. Wenning. Find Steinke, Steinke passes it out behind the arc. Three-point tries, no good. Lindemann comes up with the rebound. Lindemann, full head of steam, and a foul will be called. This one's gonna go on Becca Wenning on the entry. And that's what she do. That's what those guards from Jefferson do. They put so much pressure on the defense, Nate. They can get to the rim so easy. She went coast to coast, and she didn't settle until she got to the rim, kept her head up, and the ball goes up. She just misses a shot. Liv Lindemann goes to the free throw line. She is a 76% free throw shooter this season. First shot is up and in. Well, she's the clear leader of this team at 20.1 a game, and she can do it all. And you're seeing right now why she's got the ball in her hands, <laughs> you know, 70% of the time. Kelsey Seifring coming back in for the Cavaliers, as does number 10 Gwen Tiemann for the Lady Cats. Second free throw is good, and Delphus Jefferson has the lead at 10 to 9. <laughs> Duffus Jefferson having a special season so far, 21-1, undefeated in NWC play. But Coldwater has come out and has matched their plays. Riss Miller can't connect, and Kirsten Moore comes up with the big rebound. <laughs> I'll tell you what, when you're 6'5 and you add the dimension to your game that you can go out on the arc and knock that shot down, that's big time. Tiemann's three-pointer was off the mark. So Coldwater with another opportunity here is right now both teams, they started off hot offensively, but have gotten to hit a little bit of a wall here as we've seen the three-point line go a little bit cold for both squads. Offensive rebound comes down to Coldwater. And right now, Jefferson's doing a really good job of making Coldwater settle for the outside jumper. There they got a little closer to the basket, but for the most part, Delvis Jefferson's keeping them out of the paint, and they've got that perimeter surrounded. Steinke came up short on that one, and it almost looks like Coldwater has decided to pull Riss Miller away from the basket to try to get a couple of different defenders away from there to hopefully open some things up. Coldwater so far not able to take advantage of that. Well, and when you watch the backside where she's playing, because if you can sneak on the backside and they find him running the baseline, that'll be an easy bucket for the Jeff Cats. Kirsten Moore setting the screen. We're going to have a foul as this one is going to go on number 15, Kelsey Seifkring trying to fight through that screen, just kind of pushed Kirsten Moore right over. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that sounded a lot more a lot worse than it was. She hit the deck pretty hard, but there was no intent there that I can see of. Jenna Luger's coming back into the game. Claire Steinke will have a seat. Kirsten Moore will also take a seat as number 22, Ryland Marquis, has come into the game. So officials coming over to the scores table to get a couple of things straight. Wiltsy triggers the inbound, gets it to Lindemann. Hold Lindemann it. trying to direct traffic here. 
Coldwater's in it. Looked like a 1-3-1. They're kind of moving them players back. One of the things you cannot do, and that's have miscommunication on guarding Liv Lindemann, and that's what happened in the Cavaliers, and she drains the three-pointer because of it. Well, she's when she's out there and she gets her feet set and squares her shoulders up, she's a knockdown spot-up shooter, and that's what you're seeing. Final 30 seconds here of the quarter. Luger's going to try to drive right hand off the glass. No good. French comes up with the rebound. Here comes Lindemann. Lindemann tries to drive, gets cut off, teaming for three. That one's going to be no good. Fight for the rebound. Lindemann comes up with the offensive. She's everywhere the ball is. She, she's unbelievable on where she goes and what she directs that offense. And you saw they got a good shot in the corner because the defense collapsed because Lindemann has the ability to get to the basket. Five seconds left to go. Lindemann, she's going to drive, kicks it over. Wiltsy lets the three-pointer go. That one's going to be no good. And the first quarter will come to a close. After one, Delphus Jefferson on top, 13-9. We'll step aside and be back on WOSF. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Alima, Walpaw, and Delphins. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Nate Garlock alongside Danny Holbrook. Welcome back to Lincoln View High School. Second quarter just about underway. And Danny, you know, Coldwater gets off to the hot start. They get Rispiller going, which is exactly what they needed to do. But Jefferson does a great job adjusting. The yeah, and you're seeing the, the effects of Lindemann going to the rim. So Coldwater goes to that big 1-3-1 one, one hybrid. And what happens is Lindemann has the ability to go from the foul line to the rim, and when that she does that, those wings are collapsing in, and you saw two possessions in a row, they got easy outside jumpers. Now, they missed both of them, but if that's what you're going to have to do, then, you know, go ahead. Jefferson has the lead, but Coldwater starts with the basketball, and they're going to turn it over. Lindemann brings it up for the Lady Cats, finds Teeman down in the corner, gets it back up top. Now they're going to stay in a traditional 2-3, and they got Rissmiller in the middle there. And she's going to guard the rim. There's no doubt about that. They're, 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 they've seen enough of the Jeff Cats getting to the rim. You know, that's how they started this game, was in a little bit of that zone defense with Wiss Miller playing the middle. And they came out of it. That's when Jefferson started hitting some shots. You see Wiltsy comes up with a shot that time. That one's no good. Jefferson with another offensive rebound. Well, the problem with playing a zone, as you know, Nate, when you in a rebounding situation, you're not guarding a man. You're guarding an area. And you really got to rebound well in those zones. And right now, you're seeing the difference in those long rebounds. And if the rebound's not going up high, right, and it's something right. that Riss Miller can high point, those long rebounds, Jefferson right now is just out hustling they're quicker. Water to the yeah, basketball. They're absolutely quicker to the ball right now. So Jefferson going to take it out of bounds. Going to have a third opportunity on this trip down the floor to try to come away with some points. And you're seeing what Jefferson's doing. They're bringing Gwen Teeman up, and they're screening those wings and trying to get Lindemann off on the left or right side. Jessa Rossifer thought about the three-point try that time. Jefferson decides to start to swing it around the perimeter. So Wiltsy's down in the corner. Looked for French down low for a second, but decided against it. And Jefferson's doing a really great job of being patient on offense. And there's no reason not to be. You're up 13-9. You've got good guard play. And they're going to try to pull him out of that zone. Coldwater crowd, excuse me, trying to will their team through this possession. They want to take away. Jefferson being, a, being very, very patient as they continue to move it around the perimeter. Lindemann comes free. Readjusts, has to get rid of it. French didn't get the screen set. She was supposed to set the screen on the wing right there, and, and she didn't get it set, so Lindemann couldn't get the shot off. Lindemann just looks for a little bit of space. Step back that time, decides against it. Wiltz is going to put it on the floor. Floater left hand, good. That was a fantastic job of Hannah Wiltz. Get You just see the pump fake, and she gets to the rim. It's, and, you know, it was all worth it, the three minutes on the offensive possession. So already under six to go as Coldwater just touches it for the second time in the quarter. Here's Wending back to Lugers. Lugers lets a three-pointer go. That one's going to be no good. Great job that time by Claire Steinke to tip that one. But it ends up out of bounds off of her, so it'll go back to Lady Cats. And that started with uh, 
with Lindemann closing out on the shooter, and she got right in her face. She jumped up. She got her hand up as high as she could, so she got in her face. The shot goes off, and then a great box-out job. So right now, fundamentally, Delvis Jefferson's doing everything they need to do. See, the Lady Cats right now in no hurry, slowing things down as Lindemann tries to drive, gets into some traffic, kicks it out. Teeman lines up a three-point try. That one's no good. And Coldwater comes up with a much-needed rebound. Here's Steinke. And notice, watch Lauren French. She's going to front her the whole time. She's looking for her. And that's a great job from Coldwater, getting those shots at the elbow. If those defenders from Coldwater are going to back into that zone or back into that post player, then that, that elbow will be open. Jefferson does a great job setting the screen that time. Lindemann had a wide open look at three, but can't get that one to connect. As Kirsten Moore coming back into the game for the Lady Cats. And we'll have a timeout as Coldwater wants to talk about it. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Welcome back to Lincoln View High School. Coldwater takes a timeout as it has been quite a while since they put some points up on the board. Still within striking distance, only down six. But they got to find some way to get this offense going. Well, part of the problem is, is, is Delvis Jefferson's key in on Riss Miller, which it absolutely they should. She is their best player. But somebody else from Coldwater's got to step up, whether that means knocking down a perimeter shot or getting to the rim. When they get to the rim, that defense will shift over, and you can find Riss Miller, or you can take it up yourself. Great job by Lynn Lindman on that last inbound to tie that one up. The possession arrow favor, favor Coldwater, so they get to keep it, but it does flip the alternating possession back into the favor of the Lady Cats. Riss Miller up top, works against Moore, gets rid of it. Luger's wide open for three. She's going to send it off the glass. That one's going to be no good. And the rebound ends up back in the hands of Winning, who gets it up for two. That's a great job by Winning and recognizing where the ball was and taking it straight. She didn't hesitate. She went from the foul line to the rim in just two steps, and that's a great job by her. They needed that bad. It had been a long time since they've seen some points go up on that board. See if that opens things up for them. Now here's the thing, Nate, if you're going to be patient on offense and you're going to take two and three minutes of possession, you got to come away with points. That they do. You see French gets it, kicks it back out to Lindemann. She goes to drive. Great defense by Lugers to force that one back outside. Wiltsy tried to run with the basketball there for a second, so she has to slow down and pull it back out. Lindemann had almost zero space, still got that one off, and Lugers really for no reason decided, we tried to kind of do the box out uh, behind the arc and just got too aggressive, so Lugers picks up the foul, and they're going to say it was after the shot, so Jefferson no shots, get to yeah. take it out of bounds. Well, part, she's out by the out-of-bounds line, and I'll be honest with you, I'm going to let her shoot out there. That's, that's a long way. She snaps that off real quick, but that's a long shot. Yeah, she does have the range, but I'm going to make sure that she starts <laughs> right. making those before right. I, I do too much here. As Steinke had come up with the turnover, Trying to get it through that double team. It goes, gets knocked out of bounds, but they'll stay with the Cavaliers. Now you're seeing the active hands of Delvis Jefferson. They, and I told you they average, they only give up 29 points a game. Now you're seeing why. Those guards just get after you defensively. Coldwater finally does get it across midcourt. Lugers works against Moore, steps back. Kirsten Moore playing good man-to-man -man defense that time, forcing Jenna Lugers to get rid of it. Napke. Works around with the left hand. That's Coldwater now. They're looking to that inside, but you can just see the Lady Cats are packed in there. There's not a lot of room at all. Yeah, Riss Miller set, tried to set a screen at the elbow, and she was going to roll back to the basket. And French just stood there and got in her way. And we call that cutting down the cutter because she was cutting to the basket. And she just cut her, and she couldn't go anywhere. Steinke did a great job getting up and getting that basketball without giving, getting the over and back call. But then immediately gave it up thanks to the effort by Laura French. You see a great battle down low with French and Riss Miller down there. They're just pounding on each other right now. Lugers picks up another foul, this time trying to reach in and knock it away from Ryland Marquis. Yeah. You know, we talked to the Coldwater coaching staff before the game, and their keys were take care of the basketball, control the boards, and the most important was stop penetration on defense. And I think that's why you're going to see that zone a lot tonight. They want to control the ability to keep Delphus Jefferson out of the paint, and so far, so good.
Jefferson with the inbounds fight for that one. And number 15, Kelsey Seifkring is going to get called for the foul against Lindemann. Seifkring had just checked back into the game as Jenna Lugers had gone to the bench. Well, Nick, she, she jumped up in the air, and, and, and the, the defender didn't allow her to come down, and she went into her before she came down, and that's why the foul was called. Great job by Lindemann that time. French not able to finish, though. Fight for that one ends up back in the hands of Lindemann. That's what I'm talking about. When Lindemann drives to the basket, she can bring the defenders over, and then you got French standing there by herself. So the Jefferson offense has done a great job of killing clock time here in the second. Only two minutes left to go in the half. And I think we maybe have only seen a handful of shots yeah, go right, up right. from either yeah. team combined. Well, you know, sometimes you got to take what the defense will give you. And right now, Jefferson's doing that. They're going to, you know, they're going to take time off the clock and they're going to hope to execute and get some points on the board. Minute 45 left to go. Here's Lindemann. She just gotten a little bit too deep that time, so she has to pull it back out. Let the cold water defense continue to work. Wiltsy underneath pitches it back out. Rossford gets rid of it. Rossford Wiltsy to the corner. That one's good. Hannah yeah. Wiltsy comes up with a big three. That whole left side, everybody on that side touched the ball, and they all looked at the basket, and they all wanted to get the shot. Wiltsy got the time and the, pen or the space, and she let it go. Coldwater now, their turn on offense. Only one basket here in the second quarter, looking for some much needed points. Now, if, if Delvis Jefferson can get a stop right here, it makes that three minutes they just took off the clock even bigger because they'll have the ball with the last shot on their mind. It's trapped along the baseline, thought for a second that Coldwater might call the timeout. They don't, and it was a good decision as number 13, Maya Kanapke, uh, excuse me, came free, and she's able to finish for two. Well, Lauren French did a job. She got to the ball, but nobody rotated on the backside, and Wilson went right to the rim, and she got the bucket. Kanapke did a nice job moving without the basketball, making sure that she was open and ready. And now Jefferson going to hold for the final shot. 30 seconds left to go here in the half, and they have the five-point lead. Yeah. Wedding comes out to challenge Lindemann. And this is Lindemann's game right here. If she can spread this floor, she's going to just get just like she's doing right there. Kicks it out. Wiltsy for three one more time. That one's no good. Rostifer comes up with the rebound. Has it taken away. Seifring, she's going to get fouled. That's a good sequence for Coldwater. Defensively making that stop. That was a big stop. Jessa Rostifer is going to get whistled for that foul. She's going to check out, as does Gwen Tiemann. So you see Kirsten Moore come back into the game, and so does Rylan Marquis. Riss Miller has the basketball, gets rid of it. Five seconds to go. Kanapke gets over to Wending. They got to shoot. Riss Miller for three to end the half. And that oh. one is good off the glass as Coldwater was ice cold the entire quarter. But in that last two minutes, had some big shots, and they will go to the locker room only down two. <laughs> Riss Miller steps out of the perimeter and known for her post play, and she knocks in a huge three, the biggest one of the night for the Cavaliers. So we will step aside. We'll be back with the second half. You're watching Girls High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Lincoln View High School for tonight's sectional final matchup. Coldwater Cavaliers and Adelphus and Jefferson and Lady Cats they go up alongside Danny Holbrook. And, you know, Danny, uh, you know, it's kind of almost hard to talk about what we saw in that first <laughs> half <laughs> because it really looked like, you know, a different Delphus Jefferson team than we're seeing. They played a lot more slow. Usually they're an up tempo team. They do like to dictate pace, but usually don't see them dictating it to the style that they play. And it looked like maybe they were going to run away, but Coldwater just keep hanging around, hanging around. And the last minute 50 of that half, they have two big baskets coming off of Risk Miller's big three point play. They're only down two here to start the third. Yeah, Jefferson, you know, the last two possessions, Jefferson they didn't get anything. And they took three, four minutes off the clock. And we said earlier, you can't take that time off the clock and not cash in. And, and really, they let Risk Miller dictate what they were going to do on offense. She stands in the middle and protects that rim. And it took a lot out of the Delphus offense. So Delphus Jefferson will start with the basketball here to open the third quarter. Teaming down in the corner, kicks it back out. Wiltsy long 
uh, gathers in that long pass. She finds Tiemann in the middle of the floor. Uh, that one was poked away, but Tiemann able to gather it back in. French went to the far side of the post. When she did that, Tiemann was supposed to go to the middle, and she was. I'm sure that when she got the ball, she was supposed to take that shot because they got Riss Miller out of the middle. French with the big offensive rebound. Putbacks no good. Fight for the loose ball. French one more time. No good. It ends up being Steinke who comes up with that rebound. French has got to come away with points here. She got back-to-back -back, uh, rebounds there. She's got to put that in the basket. So the first possession by Delphi Jefferson. They come up empty. So now it's going to be Coldwater's turn. Steinke going to put it on the floor. She pulls up. She gets it. Nice job working around Linden in that time. And she pulled up right around that NWC logo and got two for a team to tie this one at 18. Well, you see Coldwater feel good about themselves right now because they've knocked down the last two possessions and they got good shots there. The three from before half and then that one. Wiltsy open for three. That one's no good. Luger smacks that one, but it's going to go out of bounds. Last touch by the Cavaliers. The officials are going to say that Seafreen touched that one as it went out. So the basketball will stay with the Lady Cats. I'm a little shocked at what we're seeing out of this Jefferson offense. We were kind of talking about it off air. You know, they just seem to be playing too slow for their own good. You know, they can't keep relying on just taking these open threes because right now they're not, they are a good shooting three point team, but they're not knocking them down right now. They got to find other ways to score. See, and, and they're getting the ball in the middle of the paint, but they're not turning and squaring up to the basket. If you're going to get the ball that far down, you've got to go to the rim and you've got to force Riss Miller to go one way or another. There's Riss Miller turnaround around jumper, no good. Put back by Wendings, no good. French there for the rebound. First time we've seen Riss Miller be able to square up to a shot in quite some time. Lindemann, full head of steam, not waiting on that Cavalier defense to catch up. Gets all the way to the rim, and she's going to go to the free throw line. And that's what you're talking about right there, Nate. You, you want to see the Jeff Cats get down the floor, and, and, Lin, and Lindemann can do that. Excuse me. I'd like to see French post up a little more and try to get Riss Miller in some defensive action and force her to make a play on defense. Lindemann lines up the free throw. That one's good. And the reason I say that is, is you want to get her into foul situations. And then if she, you know, you've got, what happens is she goes down in the middle and it opens up everything on the perimeter. Mia Kanapke coming in for the Cavaliers, as does Kirsten Moore for Delphus Jefferson as Lindemann makes the second free throw. So the Lady Cats back on top, 20 to 18. The inbounds goes off the hands of the Cavaliers. They're going to fight for the loose ball. Seacrin gets tied up with Lindemann as that tenacious defense that Liv Lindemann is known for was on display right there. Now she plays extremely hard on the defensive end, and that was right after a possession where she went coast to coast and knocks down two big free throws. Coldwater has to get it in quickly. Chris Miller takes it away from Lindemann. She brings it up the floor looking for some help. Find Steinke down low. Here's Chris Miller, works her along. She comes back up around the top of the key. Right now, Riss Miller just catching that basketball too far away from the basket. Yeah, they're pushing her out of that box right there. Now she's going down low, and that's a nice job by her. And that's where they want to find it. They can get her in the pocket every single time. That little turnaround hook for hers will be money all night. Yeah, and French has got to wall up. She's got to get her hands up. She kept her hands down that whole possession. They've got to be in the air. You've got to force Riss Miller to shoot over top of you. <laughs> Delphus Jefferson now. Looking towards the bench, getting the calls coming in from Coach Lindemann. Marlon Marquez gets rid of it. French almost lost that one, was able to get rid of it though. As Wilty wide open for three. That one was about halfway down, but still didn't finish it. But French was there, and it ended up to Lindemann who tried to get it back to Wilty. Steinke takes it away, but then she leads winning too far as Coldwater gives it right back. And, and right there is a really good example of you have to know the moment. You're a 20-20 you're, you're game. You've got the possession. You've got numbers. Ease up and either attack the rim from your side, but don't give it up. We've seen that a few times from Coldwater. They've come down the floor and given it right back to Jefferson. One of the benefits that of that, though, is that allows Coldwater to get back and get set on defense. And we've seen Jefferson struggle when they've had to work on this half-court defense from the Cavaliers. Well, right now, Jefferson's just settling for threes right now. They're not looking to get to the rim. And, and Coldwater's not going to come out of that zone if they don't hit something. Winning, guarded tightly by Moore. Changes direction, gets it over to Steinke, who finds 
Riss Miller down low. Riss Miller eye off the glass, no good. Was looking for the foul call. It doesn't come. Here comes Lindemann. She goes right through three different Cavaliers. Went into contact, but no foul as it goes out of bounds off the of cold water. Well, that was a better job defensively as French didn't allow her to get squared up in the post. We're going to have a timeout on the floor. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSA. Welcome back to tonight's scoreboard. It's presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, and Nelson. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Coldwater takes the timeout. Jefferson gets the ball here. As Lindemann's going to take the three-point try from the corner. That one's no good. Rissman goes up and gets it. Another one and done from behind the three-point line for the Lady Cats. But Coldwater helping them out is once again turning it immediately over once they get into the front court. Well, I, I don't know that that's the play they called in the huddle, and they kind of it was a quick shot. You just wanted, I mean, she was open. Don't get me wrong, but man, you got to you got to attack that rim. Lindemann brings it up for the Lady Cats. Let's see if they try to spring her free to try to get her back going into the paint. Marquis almost loses the basketball, gets it back up as Moore works it around. Wiltsy finds Lindemann down in the corner. And right now, just none of the offense for the Lady Cats has anything to do with the inside. But as you finally see French get a touch, and a three-point try by Marquis is good. Ryland Marquis comes up with a big three-point shot as the Lady Cats go back on top. And you saw why they got that open, because they moved the ball a little quicker than they have. They went to the high post, French got it out quick, and she was wide open. They got Against that defense, you got to move the ball around that zone. Pass goes to Wendings. She's able to get her hands on it to save it from going out of bounds. Riss Miller against two Lady Cats. She gets it up in here. When she gets that far down low, Nate, you're not going to stop that. She does a great job of getting really low post presence. Once again, it comes down. French turned around, completely unguarded that time. Was kind of surprised she didn't try to pick a couple of dribbles or shoot. He kicked it back out to Marquis, who missed the shot. Riss Miller fell down to the lane because Lindemann was all the way on the baseline. All French has to do is take two dribbles, and she's got a two-foot shot. I'm kind of perplexed at why she didn't do that. I think you know, French might even have been a little uh, <laughs> right. surprised. She turned around. Lauren's yeah. like, where is everybody? And kind of took her off guard. Look at Moore. Tight defense against Steinke. Finally able to get rid of it. This one goes to Wenning. Wenning looking for Riss Miller. Decides to keep it herself. Shot goes up. No good. And the rebound ends up in the hands of Liv Lindemann. Liv now. She's going to go on the run. Tries to pass it down to Wilty. Had it knocked away. She gets it back. Three-pointer on its way and good. Well, now they're rolling. They're moving that ball a little better. And Lindemann squares up. And when she has time to shoot, she's deadly. 26-22. Under two left to go here in the quarter. If I'm cold runner, I'm going back to my strengths. I'm trying to get the ball down low. That's a good move on their part. They're going to get a foul. We just saw the double team come over as Ryland Marquis came over to try to help out French. French reached in there to try to take the basketball away and gets tied up. So the foul will go on French, and we're going to have another timeout. Step aside one more time. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So Delphus Jefferson takes the timeout this time as they wanted to get everybody ready to go defensively as Lynn Lind Liv Lindemann almost comes away with the turnover. She's always got her hands where the ball is. She's really a really good defender, and she's very active. Now you're seeing French really get after Riss Mueller and body up on her and not let her get in good position. Those are the shots that Coldwater has to make as French was not going to leave Riss Miller that time. So when he had a free look at it, but just too much on that basketball, and it's going to go back to the Lady Cats after the foul. Yeah, that's a great point, Nate. She pulled her away from the basket. The backside came over on the left side, and she just missed the layup. Here's Moore. Finds Marquis down in the corner, as we've seen pretty much this whole half. Marquis for three, no good, but the Lady Cats right now are just kind of living and dying from behind the arc. That's about seven possessions in a row where they've shot threes. 
Jenna Luger's back into the game for the Cavaliers. Almost has that one taken away as Lindemann is just absolutely relentless. <laughs> that's, that's really good defense, Nate. She, did you see the intensity on her face? She's really playing hard right now. You know, it's not too often. I mean, we see a lot of great players in this area. We are very, very fortunate. Sure. You know, with, but whether you're talking on the guy's side of things or on the girl's side of things, I don't know that I've ever seen a player who takes their defense as seriously as their offense, like Liv Lindemann. Yeah, she, you're absolutely right. She prides herself on her defensive game. I just love her floor presence, Nate. She knows where all her teammates are, and she knows how to get to the rim. She, you know, I had Cameron Elwer last night from Delphi St. John's, and they're a lot alike. They're really smart basketball players. Liv Lindemann, just a junior. So still get a whole other year to watch her perform. Final 30 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Jefferson with a four-point lead, and Lindemann holds the basketball. Last time they tried this, it didn't work out well. Coldwater was able to take advantage with a three-pointer at the buzzer. Let's see what they draw up here. Lindemann works through a couple of defenders and loses the basketball. Winning comes up with it. Two, one, shot on its way in. No good as Coldwater almost catches it again at the buzzer. Yeah, well, excuse me, Lindemann just tried to split that double team. After three quarters of play, the Lady Cats are on top, 26-22. But Coldwater within striking distance. We'll step aside and be back at the OSS. Welcome back tonight. Scoreboard is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Well, partner, this is the fourth quarter. This is do or die for a sectional championship. Four-point game. These are the games that you'd like to see for these sectional titles. Close games. You're going to really come down to it. We'll see what team wants it more. Ryland Marquis off the mark on her three-point try. Riss Miller comes up with a rebound and keeps it herself. That was a great job, Coldwater defense, contesting that shot. And she was way off the mark. She had a, you know, she had a clear shot, but a great closeout there by Coldwater. Steinke works around to the left side, gets rid of it to Lugers. Back out to Riss Miller. French comes out to guard her, so there's some space on the inside. They're going to take advantage of it. Wenning goes through a couple of defenders. She's going to get fouled and make a tip to the free throw line. Nice job by Wenning with creating contact down there. She's going to go to the line. And that's a good job of making the clock stop and going to the line for two shots. <laughs> Becca Wenning going to have two free throws here. Team down four. First shot is up, and it is good. Good job by the Cavaliers that time to go to the inside to recognize that French had vacated that space as she was out with Riss Miller. Wending now with the opportunity to cash in both. She does. And we're back to a two-point game. They shoot 71% as a team from the line. So, you know, think about that later as the game moves on here in the fourth quarter. That's big from the free throw line. We'll see if Delphus Jefferson decides to continue to try to work around that arc or if they try to make a more conscious effort to get inside. Right now, it looks like they're comfortable being behind the arc. Finally find French, and French gets that one to go. And we've talked about that all night, Nate. She can do that. She is a good enough shooter. And even she even could have took a dribble or two because Riss Miller backed off of her. It, it, it's going to be surprising to see when they come back on offense if they don't run that same set again. Lugers ends up on the floor, but able to get rid of it. Kanapke has it. Here, Steinke tries to lob it into Riss Miller. French. Knocks that one away, it'll stay with Coldwater. Kirsten Moore coming back into the game for the Lady Cats, as is Gwen Tiemann. So we've seen both teams only run about seven deep on their bench here tonight. And they're using those quarter breaks effectively, too, because some of those guys went out. Great find by Riss Miller, just a little too strong. As Wenning not able to get that one to go down. Here's Tiemann in the corner, goes baseline. She gets cut off, has to kick it back out. Wilty finds French. French is going to go right at Riss Miller, goes through the contact, a little bit strong. Rebound comes down to Coldwater. OK, here's the thing. That's two possessions in a row. She made the first one, missed the second one. But I promise you this, Riss Miller is going to have to come out and step out and guard her. Yeah, I'm completely fine with that all night long. And I'm sure Coach was as well as Riss Miller gets to the basket for two. 
still have the and one opportunity, but just to finish that thought, and we talked about wanting to see Warren French do more on the yep. inside. That's exactly what I wanted to see her to go do. More often than not, you're going to get a whistle or you're going to get the basket. You know, that's what they need to do to try to, to try to have to avoid continuing to try to shoot the ball from behind the arc. And, and if you're a young kid at home and you're watching this game, what you saw Riss Miller do was run the floor right there. If you run the floor, you're going to get opportunities to score. And she did a terrific job, and she just put three points on the board for her team. So Riley Riss Miller will go to the bench. I imagine this break will be short. Just want to try to get her a little bit of water, let her get a little bit of rest, as they're going to want her for the stretch. I wouldn't be shocked if French doesn't get the ball in the middle here with Riss Miller on the bench. We talked about the size disadvantage Jefferson was going to have, but in this this time right now, uh, it, the it height advantage goes back to the Lady Cats as that one's knocked out of bounds by the Cavaliers. And she's already sitting down on the block. They're going to try to front her. If they can get her the ball, she'll get into the position. She's at the high post now. She knows if she catches that ball, she can go to the basket. Rizmo is not going to be there. A little miscommunication it looked like as some of the Lady Cats weren't quite sure where they needed to be, but everybody's set now. French with the basketball. It looked like she might have traveled. The Cold Water fans definitely wanted it. <laughs> yeah, they sure did. Long three-pointer. That one's off the back of the iron. French comes up with the rebound. She's going to find a cutting Liv Lindemann. That one's also going to be off as Lindemann right now just having a little bit of a hard time finding that touch that we're so used to her seeing. Well, you're seeing Lindemann and French right there owning the offensive board. And you said it best. When, when French got the rebound, Lindemann immediately cut to the rim, and French found her. So Coldwater able to sustain their defense without risk more, and she's going to come back into the game. Well, you said it, partner. It was going to be a quick break. She got about 30 seconds. Enough to get a quick drink. Moore left all alone, no rotation from the Cavaliers that time. They are lucky that that one didn't go down as running comes up with the rebound. Yeah, she was wide open on that shot. And here you go, Coldwater's got a chance to take the lead with five minutes to go. Coldwater has been training, trailing for the vast majority of this game. And they are looking to take the lead here with under five left to go in the fourth. Losers off the glass, it rattles off. There are times where I am not sure how a basketball <laughs> doesn't go down the hoop, and that was one of them right there. I have no idea how that ball did not go in. It was in the rim, and it popped back out. I think the entire gym <laughs> thought that one was going in. The entire Coldwater crowd just was like, oh, my goodness. As we're going to have a timeout from the Lady Cats. 28-27, 4.32 left to go, and Coldwater and Delta Shepherdson battle for a sectional title. We'll step aside and be back on WOSA. High School, Delta Jefferson takes the timeout. Didn't want to lose the possession. Coach Lindemann not happy with the effort from her offense and wanted to talk to them and try to regroup. So it'll be interesting to see if they don't go back into French at the high post and see if she can wheel and deal and pull uh, Rissmiller away from the bucket. Lindemann works around, gets cut off. Steinke with a nice defense that time as Lindemann has her reverse course. Yeah, now they're, every time she goes around, Marquis is going to be off on that one as you can kind of see her push it, but Wiltsy does a great job of tracking it and saving it from going out of bounds. Chris Miller with those long arms pokes that one away, but Jefferson one more time able to keep the basketball. Yeah, Jefferson was lucky to get that one back. It was just a lot of hustle by Lauren French. Here's Lindemann. Tries to work through the screen. She's going to put up a three-pointer. That one's going to be off. Nice screen by French out top. And I think Lauren French has played a lot better second half. She's got more active on the offensive and defensive ends. You know, we've talked about you know, the, the shot selection for Delphus Jefferson and, and you know, uh, you know, been a little critical of the fact that they just sure. wanted to live behind yeah. that three-point line. But to their credit, they are typically a pretty good three-point sure. three shooting team. If they would even just shoot their average, which is over 30%, they'd probably have a 12, 13-point lead right now. They're getting good looks. The shot, I mean, they're not forcing anything. They're just leaving a lot of these shots short. Sure, and <laughs> you're not going to play night in and night out a, a, a team with a 6'5 post player as good as this Miller is. You're not going to play a lot of teams with a 6'5 post player. Still a one-point game. Riss Miller wasn't able to get the turnaround to go down. One of the few times we've seen her miss at that range. 3.20 left to go here in the game. Still a one-point deficit. The official at 
time is going to call it as the tie-up almost happened, but since it didn't, as Welty <laughs> picked that one up and then put it back on the floor, it was an easy travel. Yeah, I was going to say, that wasn't hard to call that one, but she picked it up and then put it back. And she didn't mean to put it back down the floor. It just happened. Chris Miller able to get the inbounds, gets it back to Steinke. Dude, you're seeing Gwen Tiemann all over Riss Miller on that ball. Coldwater looks to the inside, running no space to get it down to Riss Miller. She's working hard against French. Falls for it. Here comes the double team. We'll see what she does with it. Sides against it, wants to go to the other side. Double team they're, all yeah. night long for Riss Miller. They're she has no space. Yeah. They had an opportunity right there, but didn't get the pass in quick enough. Jefferson did a nice job of closing the window. Yeah, we both saw at the same time. And Coach is going to draw something up to get that double team off of her. So we are going to have a full timeout. So we'll step aside one more time and be back on WOSN. Crispy Chicken, home style happens here. So Coldwater takes the timeout. As you can see, they were trying to get it inside the wrist pillar, but Jefferson, with their great defense, just not allowing that to happen. So they want to take the timeout and try to draw something up. And now they've got her in single coverage right there. That's a nice, and there you see a nice up and under. That's all footwork by Rizmo. That is how that one happened. And I think that might have been part of the problem in a couple other possessions. She would try to put it on the floor to dribble, and that's when the collapse would happen. That time she didn't allow it to happen, used her feet, did a nice job creating some space, and made that one go down. Yeah. Three point tries, no good, and a block by Rizmo. Luger's on the run out. One on one against Wiltsy. She goes up. We're going to have a foul called. Hannah is going to pick up the foul, and Jenna Luger will go to the free throw line to shoot two. Well, you saw Riss Miller on that last play. And they, you're right, that is a lot of good footwork. That's a lot of time in the gym with assistant coaches feeding the post, and you turning and back and forth. And that was a nice move by that young lady. Luger's first free throw was no good. Coldwater has a one point lead with 152 left to go. You mentioned the season that Delphus Jefferson has had. If Coldwater pulls off this upset, it will be a massive one. Yeah, it, it, it'll uh, change the course of a lot of brackets in the state of Ohio, or Northwest Ohio. Uh, this would be a huge win for the Coldwater Cavaliers and a disappointing loss for the Jeff Cats. Two point lead. Liv Lindenman brings it up for the Lady Cats. Jefferson, it's been a while since they've scored, trying to get something going. Scoring has typically not been an issue for this team. We'll see how they battle out of this one. Marquis gets her feet set, but that one's no good. Lindemann with the rebound. Rissman is going to get called for the foul. That's a great job of Lindemann penetrating to the basket, kicking out to her teammate. And then what's she do? She takes the extra dribble to get space, and that was a really nice job. Inbound comes underneath the basket. Lindemann has to force that one through some traffic. And going to be another foul on Rissman as French was trying to go up, so the Coldwater fan faithful. They wanted the jump ball, but for at least from our vantage point, it looked pretty clear that Riss Miller yeah. was all over the arms. She, she got her. That, uh, <laughs> from what I saw, it was a foul there. So Lauren French at the free throw line, able to connect on the first. I'll say it again, Lauren French has played a nice second half, Nate. She's really got after it on both ends of the court. Second free throw is good, and we are all tied. Chris Miller gets the inbounds. Long lob that time is a dangerous pass, but Chris Miller able to come up with it. Yeah, they're going to float Chris Miller back down to the post. She's going to screen for the cutter. You saw that she goes right back in. They're going to bring. In, they're going to just bring girls off of her. They're going to keep circling around. Here's Wenning, tightly guarded. Moore doing a great job. Here comes the double team. Lindemann trying to take it away. And we're going to have a foul. This one's going to go on Kirsten Moore. 
Well, you saw Becca winning, and what happened was Becca winning goes to the corner. Liv Lindemann doesn't go to the corner until Becca winning turns her head, and it's a little run and jump like you'd see up top. And then a great job by the Jeff Cats. Inbounds comes to a wide open Steinke. She's going to get Wrist Miller. Wrist Miller turn around left hand. Nice touch, but it went back and falls off the back of the rim. And then a foul as Wrist Miller. That's a little bit of a frustra frustration call that time as Wrist Miller should have known better to back that one off. Lindemann was clearly going to get around that screen. Well, you can't do any more than what Wrist Miller did there. She got low post position. She got a nice shot. She just missed it. 47.8 seconds left to go. Coach Lindemann wants to draw something up. Step aside to be back. WOSN. Welcome back to tonight's Small Quarters, presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lionel, Walpaw, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. 47.8 seconds left to go, all tied at 30. A sectional title hangs in the balance. The winner of this one will move on to the district at Elida, where they will play the winner of Wayne Trace and Allen East. That game follows this one. Whether it be after regulation or overtime, we'll see. I don't know what I'm doing, Nate. If I got my coach's hat on, I'm taking the last shot of the game. I'm not giving anybody else an opportunity. Jump ball, possession arrow favors cold water and i gotta be honest with you i we talked uh, off air yeah. i did not think that cold water would challenge nope we really thought that jefferson may try to hold this one and take that last shot and i thought cold water might let them but a great job that time by jenna lugers to jump in challenge that one and eventually come away with the jump ball that was some nice coaching nate she did a nice job in the huddle of telling her kids we're gonna trap if it goes that high so now it's going to be Coldwater's turn to take the timeout. We'll step aside one more time and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Do you enjoy games like this one, and are you thankful for the chance to showcase our local high school teams on TV? Please consider making a donation to TV44 so we can keep airing games just like this one. Donate online right now at WTLW.com or send a gift by phone by calling 419-339-4444. Coldwater gets the inbounds. Jenna Luger takes it into the front court. 27 seconds left to go. Jefferson has been playing tight defense all night. I don't imagine that's going to change at all. They're going to leave somebody wide open because they're not going to let Riss Miller catch this one on the inside. It's going to go out of bounds and stay with Coldwater. Well... You're absolutely right. They're not going to allow Riss Miller to catch the ball. If anybody else is going to beat him, that's one thing. But they are not going to let her get the ball down low. Now watch the lob right here. Watch the lob if they've got the play. Right there it is. Riss Miller gets it. She's double teamed. See what she does. Great strong move. And what about Lauren French? you got to be kidding me, Nate. Here comes Lindemann all the way in. Hasn't been able to do it all game long, but with four seconds left to go, she gets to the basket, going to the free throw line for two. That is the play of the game, Nate. Lauren French out of nowhere makes the block, the saving block of the game. My goodness. And there is nobody you would want on that line more than Liv Lindemann in this situation. She is the leader of this team, a thousand point score, shooting 76% from the free throw line this year. And the Broadcasters, Jinx, you can send your letters, <laughs> Kara, Danny Holbrook. I just read what he writes down, folks. I, that wasn't me at all. Lindemann catches in the second. Four seconds left to go. Coldwater's got to go quick. We're going to have another timeout. Coldwater's going to want to talk about this one and set it up. We'll keep it here as well. Just a 30-second timeout. And Danny, the end of this game, I'll tell you what, there were stretches where neither team really seemed to get things going. The defenses were really clamping down. But man, what an exciting ending. Yeah, Lauren French just slides over. Get your hands up. I've been screaming all game. Get your hands up, big girl. Get your hands up. And she does a great job. Now, if I'm cold water, I got one timeout left. I may want to consider getting the ball to half court. When you get the ball to half court, then you can post Wrist Miller up and take your chances by putting the ball down low. They're all going to go to her. So if the ball goes down low, there's a real good chance there's going to be a lot of activity down there. You may get a foul. Yep. Well, I don't, I don't, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. 
<laughs> yeah, they got to go the whole court. This Jefferson defense is why I'm so hesitant. Yeah. They oh, play I'm not so saying tight. that's going to happen. <laughs> you know, well, I, but even trying to get it up in 4.6 sure. seconds, trying to get a clean look, you're going to probably have to try to run a couple of uh, double screens. Well, no matter what you do, as you see Riss Miller, she's going to stay back down here. They may try to go for this long pass. 4.6 second, seconds left is a long time. She can put it on the floor, but they got to come away with it clean here. I like this coaching strategy of not guarding the ball. I like having somebody on every player. Riss Miller gets it. She finds Wenning, who came clean. Wenning going to go to the basket, and no foul called. The layup is no good, and Coldwater falls just shy of a stunning comeback. What a play. Everybody came to Riss Miller when she got the ball and the backside was completely open. I love that play. Great discipline as well by the Jeff Cats down low to make sure that they did not foul Wedding as she went up. As Wedding, I think, just took one too many dribbles that time, had to put it up. But either way, it's tournament time. It's all about surviving and advancing, and that's exactly what happened to the Lady Cats. Yeah, congratulations to the Lady Cats from Delft Jefferson, sectional champions. They're going to move on to the district play, and they could get another shot at Allen East, who's in the Northwest Conference with them. And Allen East and Wayne Trace to follow this game for their own sectional title. The winner of that game moves on to Elida to a play Delphus Jefferson as Delphus Jefferson's incredible season rolls on. They are now a 22 and 1. You've got to give your hats off though to this cold water team. They came in as big underdogs. They had all uh, first team all conference back player and Riley Riss Miller. They had other players step up this game. Their defense really clamped down on a very talented Lady Cat offense, but when it all came down to it, it was Liv Lindemann on the free throw line for the win. She, she makes the plays that they need made, Nate. She is the best player on the floor. She's the floor general. She did exactly what she needed to do. Look, sometimes when you're the favorite, you're going to win ugly games. And hey, it, it, it doesn't matter, one or 100. Delvis Jefferson got the win. They moved on. I'm sure they're not happy with the, with the performance. They can't be. They played a lot better. But you know what? They're going to the districts. So that is just going to about wrap it up for us here at Lincoln View High School. We still have one game left to go tonight, and that is going to be the Wayne Trace Raiders and the Alanese Mustangs. We'd like to thank our crew tonight working the cameras. Jacob and Marshall doing a great job as always. We appreciate everything you guys do for us. And one final time, for Danny Holbrook, I'm Nate Garlock. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great night, everybody.